Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Wednesday, April 14th, 2010. This morning I thought I'd go through the Twitter client, not because I haven't done this before, but because there have been changes since the last time I did a screencast on this, and I got a question on this this morning. First thing you want to do is go to the public store repository, and if you start typing Twitter, you'll notice that you get some somewhat confusing results. You can ignore the bottom feeder plugin, that's for bottom feeder. You can also ignore this bundle. That's what you might think you want to load, but if you look at the dates on this, you notice that I've got obsolete pushed here, Twitter interface likely, I've got obsolete listed here. What you want is the Twitter package. Now I've already loaded this, so you don't have to watch me load it. But this is a small package, I've removed all the UI elements from this, and it's just the basic Twitter interface. So going down to that, what you want to do before you really start using it is you have to set up a settings file and it should be saved as Twitter settings.ini and all you really need to do is this create a settings on Twitter client settings new give it your Twitter screen name and your Twitter password and then save it to that file name and that'll create a save file with the encrypted username and password in it and you can then start using the interface and the interface is pretty simple you go here and create a new instance of the model and let's go ahead and browse that code first I want to show you what I've done here and this is a fairly basic thing. I've covered most of the APIs in the Twitter client. This is a couple of months old now, so for all I know they've added to it. I haven't kept all that much track of it. But if you go down, you'll find that I've got two things here in terms of the level of interface. Twitter model, which is kind of a high-level OO interface. You work with objects. And then there's a Twitter client, Twitter HTTP API, rather. This is the namespace. And this guy here is a much lower-level HTTP thing. It doesn't persist anything. You just go ahead and work straight down at the HTTP level, and it's much lower level a little simpler to use in some ways, more time consuming to use in others. I'm not going to go through that this morning. I'm going to stay up here at the model level. If you really want to dive into this, the APIs all match one to one with the higher level. I just haven't got any convenience APIs down at the lower level. So to give you an idea of what I'm going to do here, you come in, create a model, do it, do it. Now you can do things like this, get the latest updates from all of the people you've listed as friends and do an inspect on that. And it'll take it a moment because it's doing a query against the Twitter API. If you get nothing back, it means that Twitter is busy right now. In that case, you won't see what I'm looking at here. So if I scroll through here, you'll see static updates. So I can double click on this one. And you see you got a whole bunch of stuff here. So I've got the screen name for this guy, the last status he set, and so on. So you've got all those. You can also do this for your followers, the people who are specifically following you. And depending on how you use Twitter, one or the other of these lists is going to be bigger than the other. And you can go through here and see that you've got all of these things as well. Same exact objects, just a different query. Now, there are other pieces of the API that I've covered. For instance, Twitter a while ago added this thing called trending topics. So if I wanted to get the current trends, I can do something like this. Get current trends. It'll give me the list of all the currently trending topics. And it's a pretty simple little thing. You see here I've got an array, oh, just like me, now playing, and so on. Not terribly rational stuff. If you follow Twitter trending topics, you notice that a lot of stuff rises to the top that's at least not of interest to me, but maybe of interest to you, I don't know. You can also ask for daily and weekly trends. Now, you can do more complicated things as well. If you wanted to get a specific user, if you give them user args a screen name and then ask the model to show that user, you can do queries against this kind of thing and do an inspect and get back all the data that is accessible to you for this particular user. So I can see his latest status, so there it is. And I can go ahead and take a look at user args to see what it is I can specify. So you see user query args here. And you can see I can specify a number of things like the ID, the screen name, the user ID, and I can query any number of ways that way. Likewise, I can go down and get all the direct messages for myself. I can't query other people's direct messages. That would be a privacy violation. But I can specify that I only want the last 100 or so. I haven't sent that many, so I'm going to get fewer than 100. But if I do an inspect here, I'm going to get the list of all the last few direct messages I've sent. So here it is or sent to me rather. So this was sent by Carlos Corsetti to me a few days ago, April 12th. So you can get all the direct messages that came to you. And finally, what would Twitter be if I couldn't set my status? So I'll go ahead and go do this. Set status to. I'll do a do it. And you can see that I can't actually type. So let's escape that quote there. Let's try that again. And now to see how that's happening, let's go ahead and I'll bring up Firefox. And we'll bring that over to Twitter. So we'll go to twittr.com slash, and we'll go to my page. And there it is. 
from VisualWorks during today's screencast, and I'm not even logged in, so you are seeing that that is my latest update. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.